Hi. This video is part of a series in which I learn about programming a retro video game on the Commodore 64 in assembly. The code I'm using is from the game Supernatural, written by Georg Rottensteiner. You may also know the game as Guns and Ghosts. This is not a tutorial, just me learning game programming. Enjoy the video. Coders, how's life? Um, we are at step 29 today and we have a, well, something that falls in the category of uh, uh, embellishments, I suppose. It doesn't add anything, but, you know, when you add, uh, when you create a game, you want to add some some hoo-ha to the to the to the startup screen and the game over stuff just some uh, some bells and whistles basically and that is what this uh episode is about um we are adding a uh, a color uh, role uh to the high score screen and i'll show you what that looks like it looks like this see that normally i'm uh, normally this text would be uh, just white, but you can see there's now sort of a shimmy going on over the um, over the text. Um, just the text uh, that is uh, the high score table. So this top bit that was high res graphics, which still has some faults in it, but you know this is just temporary, I suppose. And the press fire to play isn't being touched either. Um, uh, we can see sort of a, a white to black and it's going in a certain pattern and uh, uh, what should be clear in this is that we're just changing the color memory uh, and not the character memory. So uh, let's, uh, let's see how that works. Uh, all of these changes are inside the title screen now, there is an episode on how the title screen was built, but there are some changes to it. Um, well, as usual, uh, we'll, st we'll start by looking at uh, some, of the, some of the data, and I'll just jump to that straight from here. Um, some of you may remember that, and I'm scrolling up, uh, at the moment, there is uh, some bitmap data. That is the text supernatural that I just talked about, the one with the uh, with the one or two faults in it. And at the end of that data, uh, was uh, it even has uh, the comment still in here? Here's some free memory between the end of that data and the start of the. Um, of the area where the uh, uh, the screen line offset tables are. Um, these bytes, there are 320 bytes, and we're using that. Um, we're using that. And let's see how we use that. Let's hold on. Go back to the title screen. I'm just jumping back there. Oh, in the latest version of uh, C64 Studio, we now have the option of sorting the labels here, which is great. Um, so, just to go over it, we had the button press stuff. Uh, we're clearing the screen here. Uh, we're putting uh, the title logo, the text title. I don't think we're, we, we're actually seeing that anymore. Then we have the press fire to start which is being printed as well. Uh, and then we place the high score table, which uh, consists of the high score names. Now, it's important to realize these numbers, um, six spaces in and ten lines down. Or is it ten spaces in and six lines down? I'm not exactly sure, but if we display text... Oh, come on. Let's see. Go to declaration. Display text. Parameter X is the, uh, is in... Uh, parameter 1 is the X and parameter Y... Parameter 2 is Y. So 1, 2 is X, Y. 1, 2 is X, Y. 
so this is X, six characters in and 10 lines down. High score name, display text, and then um, 25 characters in and 10 lines down uh, are the scores, right? Names and scores are different. Now, in the previous versions uh, of the code, this was different. Uh, this is where the magic happens now. I'm just wondering... Uh, first of all, those 320 bytes, we're setting them to zero. Title, logo, color, RAM. I wonder if that, I don't think that memory. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the memory map, though. Oop, thank you. Uh, Supernatural, where are we? Because I made a little, uh text file to remind me of the memory map, which I don't have just, uh, this is the memory map. You may not be able to read this, but, uh, screen color memory D eight zero zero, right? D eight zero zero. So that's what we're, uh, so I don't know. Um, some arbitrary, uh, space in memory, 320 bytes. We're setting, um, oh, this is where screen, oh, I didn't have to look it up. Screen color is right there. So we're keeping a copy of the title logo color RAM. We're loading it from there and copying it into the actual color RAM. And we're setting it to zero. Uh, no. No, no, no. We're, oh, okay, right. We're copying it from low color RAM to the screen color. Increase, so we do 256, and then we start with the la last couple up to 320, right? So we just add 256 here, increase X, and compare it to whatever is left. So we have two little loops here uh, that copy the title logo color RAM to the screen color. Uh, so we're actually making the screen color black. That may be just the background color then, I suppose. Well, here we go. Um, the color fade position, we have a byte that has a color fade position. We do the weight frame, so we do the, the work uh, when the, the raster is at the bottom of the frame. Um, we increase the color fade position, uh, which is probably just an index into um, uh, the, the color table that we'll see in a minute. We increase the position, we check it, you know, we, we load it into the accumulator, we end it with the color fade length. Now, we should really have a look at what this color fade length is. Uh, actually, this is the color fade length and this is the color fade table. So we have a table, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 long. And the color fade length is also 16. So there's a table with a bunch of values. These are the colors, of course, black. And I think this is all variations of blue. So this sort of fades the... Uh, fades the color, and we have an index pointing into this uh, table. Now back to the title screen. Where were we? So we've just copied that color RAM, which was all zeros, to the screen color. I don't know why we would do that. I don't know if we even use this. Anyway, we, just, we could have just set it to zero all. But we're literally copying it. I mean, it's it's... This memory is uh, initialized to be zero, uh, but apparently we don't want to just simply write zeros in it. We just w we want to initialize it with some color. I don't know what the idea is there. Maybe we're just building in some sort of flexibility so we can change whatever the starting colors are, I suppose. Um, we increase that, uh, we we set it to zero, 
and we start a loop, we increase it, we load it, we end it with 16 minus 1. That is, of course, um, because this array, uh, the color fade array that we just saw is 16 long, but you start with 0. So you end it to make sure that if after you've increased it, it doesn't uh, go beyond the... Um, uh, the color fade length, so the, the the value in color fade position will never be larger than uh, the actual length of the table, which is good because otherwise we'd uh, run out of our table and read wrong values. Um, you'll have to assume, or you'll have to believe me if I say that this parameter 1 is going to be the line number that we're working on. What we're going to do is we're going to go past each line and fill in those colors and we uh, but the color table the 16 characters is shorter than the actual length of the uh, of the text so what we're going to do is we're going to be repeating the content of that table and then we're going to go to the next line and write you know change the colors according to whatever is in that table again but with a minor difference, and I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> so we load the line number. We add 10 uh, because we are starting at line 10, and uh, we use that as an index to get the... Um, uh, the address of the first character of the line that we're working on, right? So, uh, zero page pointer one um, will point to the color memory. Now, the low parts of uh, the the screen and the color memory are going to be the same. The high parts are going to be different. Um, but we get the low part of the first character of the line that we're working on, we get the high part, then we add the difference uh, between the color and screen memory. We've seen this before, I just thought I'd quickly explain it again. So then we end up with a pointer that points to the first character of the line that we're looking at, but it, it points to the color memory. Then we load uh, six into Y, um, we load the color fade position, so this is where we are in the table. We're, we're fading out. We're, we're adding the fade to the line. Now we're adding the line number. That may not make sense, but it will make sense if I show you what that does. Uh, again, uh, we're, uh, we're, we're messing with that color fade position, so we have to do the same trick to make sure that uh, we don't run out of the table. So now we have a color fade um uh, index and uh, which is X, and this is where the actual copy uh, happens uh, from the color fade table, indexed by X, and we store um, that value into the um, uh, into the color memory position. Remember, this pointed to the first uh, character of the line that we're looking at, and we're adding Y, and Y was uh, six here. Uh, with the added line number. So uh, if we're on line number one, we're adding one. If we're on line number two, we're adding two, and so on, and so on. So this indexes the place that we uh, start copying that um, uh, color fade table in, uh, and that color, f color index just wraps around in the table so that we we sort of always pick a value from that color table uh, and if we're at the end of the table it just goes back to the beginning which is what we want because remember in the beginning of my little talk I said that the the 16 uh, character wide color table is and it fits a number of times into the line which is what we'll see here because we're going to increase y and um, if we've increased y uh, 35 times, <coughs> then that will mean that we have done a complete line. And uh, fade color line done uh, jumps here. It increases the line number, checks if we've done eight lines. This explains why we don't do the whole screen, but just this the lines in the, in the high score table. 
And if we've not done eight lines, we just jump back to fade line, which is there, but then the next line. Um, uh, if we haven't done, um, if we, we haven't reached the end of the line, we increase X, which is the pointer into the color fade table. We compare it to the color fade length. If we haven't uh, reached the end, um, then we can just uh, fade color next character, which is here. So we take the next character and just walk to the end of the line. If we if we have reached the end, then we make X zero and then we jump back here so that we make sure we don't uh, fall out of the um, of the color fade table. Now, if I comment out these two, adding uh, that line number, you get this, and that will make it immediately clear. See, this this will make. I mean, this is nice too, but the other one, the first one, sort of had a slant to it. And you, because now each line uh, just has the same value. But if you add, which is pretty smart, this I think is pretty cool. If you just add the the, the line number, uh, you're going to be in a uh, in a different place for each line uh, for the um, uh, for for which color you pick. And then you get this, right? So each line is going to be ahead by one, which I thought was. Uh, was pretty cool, uh, and then after you've done all the lines, this is just with the with the same uh, thing um, <coughs> happens that happened before in the, in the title screen. So there's nothing different there. So it's <coughs> excuse me. It's a bit tricky to explain, but basically what is happening is that you're if I uh, can find the color fade table. Didn't I jump to the, uh, sorry, color fade table, where are you? Color fade table, there, color fade one, go to declaration, there. You're basically just copying these values into color memory on one line, and then you're copying it again and again and again, and you're, you're starting here perhaps and on the on the next line you're starting there and on the next line you're starting there and then as you go along you move the index ahead and then you print 16 of these colors but when you're here you have to start there again so that makes the that makes it a little bit tricky but um i i, I think it's 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 pretty clear what's happening we're just uh, messing with the uh with the color memory um i haven't really explained to you or to myself why this is happening, why we're copying from the title logo color RAM. This must be a future thing. Uh, and maybe this will help resetting it to a default later. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that is it for this episode. Nice and short, I hope. 20 minutes so far. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.